Hey guys, welcome to Eons of Battle. My name is Jay and I am a miniature collectaholic. A little while ago, quite a while ago now, I made a video showing every model I had ever painted. Seeing all that work completed made me feel really proud and gave me a wave of hobby energy that I've been riding on for the past few months. But this video will probably kill me. There's a reason that this video, the obvious sequel, is coming out five months later. It's because this is going to suck. This might be the hardest video I'll ever have to make. It goes by many names. A pile of shame, a pile of opportunity, sometimes called a poo, or an accumulation of humiliation. Whatever name you give it, it is a collection of unpainted, unassembled, maybe even unboxed miniatures. Now, to justify my pile of shame, I really like collecting stuff, I really like building stuff, and I really like painting stuff. This hobby was made for me, but over the course of time, I have jumped from project to project, finishing many, but not all. Some have slipped through the cracks and now lie forgotten in boxes, barely a fleeting memory of what once was an exciting project. I'm gonna crack open the vault. I'm gonna stare death in the face. I'm gonna go through my pile of shame. It's crazy that pile of shames form it all. Why? It should be so simple. It should be, hey, that's a neat model. I really dig that. I will buy them, put them together and paint them. Do, 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 cool. Now I have a new unit for my collection. That is what's supposed to happen, but it so often doesn't. It seems like every day new hot miniatures come out. And I think, well, I guess I can pause on this for a while and finish that first. And this is not a good thing. This is not a flex. This is me coming to terms with my shame. Now I'm a little unique in that I don't have other hobbies. I don't go out. I don't play video games. I don't do anything else besides wargaming. And that passion, some might say obsession, has led to this. It's time I go through my pile of shame and really try to explain myself. There is a reason for every acquisition and hopefully seeing them again will jog my memory and hopefully it won't be too embarrassing. All right, starting off my pile of shame, I'm gonna be starting with the Space Marines. This is probably my biggest pile of shame. Space Marines are by far my biggest army and I have the most painted of them, but I also have the most plastic of them. So let's set a little bit of this aside and we'll start with what almost every Space Marine player has is a complete set of Indominus Unpainted. When these models came out, I was completely blown away with just how amazing everything looked. And, uh, but that level of amazement has not lasted to me actually getting them painted. They will get painted, because I do love the Primaris Marines, but not quite yet. Everything in this box is Primaris, except for a couple of pieces. I have uh, some Space Marine characters, a couple of Space Marine scouts, but uh, overall, I think my, my Space Marine army is gonna be going in a very Primaris direction. In this little capsule, I actually have a whole bunch of Space Marine chaplains, because I collect Space Marine Chaplains. My goal is to one day own every single Chaplain Games Workshop I've ever made. And I'm well on my way, but I don't quite have everything yet. I have three Centurions actually built. Uh, these were a proof of concept. I wanted to see if I could take the kit, which is like, it's a so-so kit and perfect it. Here's all the magnetized parts and I love them. And I really want to paint them, but there's not enough time. And here, Yeah, this is, this is two Space Marine Razorbacks with uh, all the parts to turn them into two uh, regular rhinos or two predator tanks. Um, and they probably one day will become those things. I remember it took, it's actually really hard to magnetize the predator kit. I have a video on it in the far, far past. But uh, yep, a little bit shameful. This is, what is, this is 10 Space Marine Intercessors, the multi-part plastic kit. Um, I think I used one of these for a video and I still have nine more that will probably become uh, Kill Team guys. And then I have one more sprue of Indominus. It's the only thing I have not built. This is the Assault Intercessors, which I'm a Black Templar. This should be my jam. Haven't gotten around to building them yet. This is three more Centurion war suits. Uh, I think one day, I think you might see this in a video, but it's a little shameful it's still on sprue. And then what's in this box? This box is all, oh my goodness, it's, okay, well, 
This is not gonna be as triumphant as I wanted. It's a Land Raider. Uh, this is, it's completely built. The only thing that is wrong with it is uh, I'm missing these little windows cause I cut them off. Uh, cause, cause I cut them off and I was planning on doing kind of like a cathedral turret here, but I don't know how to do that. So as soon as that gets done, I will go ahead and paint this up. I have all of the magnetized bits to turn it into any Land Raider variants. Um, I have all of the bits still on sprue. I did a tons of custom work on this, but uh, yeah, have not managed to get it built yet. So that, doo -doo -doo -doo, that is all of my Space Marine stuff. And it's already not looking good. This is a lot, but uh, I've looked at it again. It's now back in my brain. I know what's here. So uh, let's move on. Next up for a collection of shame, I have my Gene Stealer cult, the cult of the four armed emperor. Uh, most of it is um, Acolyte and Metamorph hybrids. With these, I bought so many copies of Death Watch Overkill. And so I, I mean, I have like 25 or 30 painted up. I think I have another 20 or so here. Um, they're all based, they're all ready to go. They're all headless. I don't remember why, but um, yeah, these, I mean, they're ready to rock. I just need to do them. Uh, I also, I mean, these, these are, these are aberrants, Gene Stealer cult aberrants. And I, these are what kind of got me into the Gene Stealer cults. I think they're so amazing. They're so awesome looking. I bought so many copies of Death Watch Overkill and they came with four or five that you could build in a few different ways. And then when the multi-part plastic kit came out, I think I bought two more boxes of that. I have like 20 built, which is insane. Like it's an elite unit, you only need a few, but I have so many and then I have a bunch more unpainted right here. Uh, what is this? Yeah, these, these, um, what this is, is these are Victoria Miniatures auto gun heavy weapons platforms. So the Gene Stealers, they can take a couple of Imperial Guard units and one of those is heavy weapon platforms. And so uh, one day on Facebook, I think, uh, there was a sale going on with Victoria Miniatures. And so I bought these for, I don't know, probably full price. It wasn't that great a deal, but I have them. Uh, I think the reason that I never really did anything with them is because it didn't come with the crew. So I think I'm gonna have to somehow procure the Imperial Guard gunners, and then I'll finish putting this together. But uh, I think the auto guns are gonna be a nice addition to my army uh, when I get around to it, right? When? All right, and then in this home style freezer bag, uh, I have 15 Gene Stealers. These are classic. I got these from a bunch of different places. Some of them I bought on eBay. Some of them I got in that uh, that table or that board game that Games Workshop put out, um, Lost Patrol. I think I got a bunch of them that way. A couple of them I just bought over the years. I want I want a lot of Gene Stealers in my army. I've painted I painted one a million years ago in a video, and then I painted five more uh, here on YouTube uh, live stream. But I have plenty more where that came from. So that that is my Gene Stealer cult pile of shame. Next. All right, next is my orcs, and I'm trying to go in descending order of size, but this actually looks like a lot more than the Gene Stealer cult. I have five orc knobs that are just one step away from painting. Just put paintbrush to model. And then I have, what is this? I have 20 orc boys still on sprue. These need to be built a little, not that long ago. I saw a deal that was just too good to pass up on the old Facebook marketplace, and so, that's how I got a lot of this new on spruce stuff. And I just haven't haven't had time or I guess the inclination to put them together. Uh, another, another set of five knobs. I have five more knobs. Five more knobs built. I have, what, three and a half boys and like eight Gretchen. So that is useful and I don't know, you, you, somebody, someone in the comments might have to let me know. I have two Def Coptas. Is this usable? Do I need three? I don't know how I have two. I must have lost one or broken one, but uh, two Assault on Blackreach Def Coptas. And then really what I wanted to do with this army is I wanted this to be Mad Max themed orcs. And so I have just a whole bunch of bikers and each one has been lovingly kit bashed. They look amazing. They have spell crow heads. They have tons and tons of extra little bits. And I, I painted up a bunch. I painted like eight. Is that a bunch? I painted up eight. 
I have, I don't know, 15 left to go. Uh, I've put together so many. This is not a fun kit. The Orc Warbiker kit. Orc players, you know. This is not an amazing kit to put together, but I have built it so many times. I have lots of fun stuff. I've got guy popping a wheelie. I've got uh, this guy with a with a, a custom shooter, or what's it called, Def Gun. Every single one has been lovingly customized. It's just they're kind of a bummer to paint. It's kind of like painting like at least three or four orcs because you got the orc rider and then you got the entire bike. So a little bit of procrastinating, a little bit. I don't play orcs. Usually if I play the game, I'm playing Space Marines. But uh, yeah, it's just this. This is kind of a lot. All right, moving on. Next up is my Death Watch box. Uh, some of the stuff was procured in Death Watch Overkill when I was buying all my gene stealers. I didn't plan. I didn't start my life planning on doing a Death Watch army, but they're so cool. They're like the, the special, I mean, Space Marines are special forces, but these are the special forces of the special forces. And I really, really like them. I picked up a few more over the years, which I probably shouldn't have. I've, been, I've painted like 50 Death Watch Marines. Um, and they're all the old ones. They all have the wrong loadouts for 9th edition. I built them in 8th edition. So, first I have five uh, Terminators. These are the classic Terminators, but I did a lot of kit bashing, a lot of converging, and full magnetization. So these guys are pretty dope. Don't know if I'll ever get around to painting them. It's, it's fine, everything is fine. This, this army I struggle with a little bit because it's a lot like my Space Marines. If I'm in the mood for Space Marines, usually I'm in the mood for my Black Templar but they're super cool and I like them. I like them still. And I own all this stuff and I don't know how this happened, but uh... So five Terminators. Then I have uh, one, two, three, a lot of Space Marine bikers. I bought this, I bought a bunch of these. It was a job lot on eBay and I love Space Marine bikers. I mean, you just, I just like bikes. I have 30 orc bikes, I have 30 Death Watch bikes. And the thing that kills me with these is the Primaris Outriders just came out not that long ago, and they kind of supersede these. Does it make sense to spend 100 hours painting up these bikers? I don't know. Does it spark joy? I think it might. I think it might still spark joy, but I have, I have so many. I mean, got like, Probably 20, probably 20 bikes in this box. A lot of them are bought on eBay. A lot of them I built. And once again, the Space Marine bike kit is not that much fun to assemble, but I did it. I want to give every single one of them a chain sword. They get, what, two or three attacks on the charge. Plus they have the amazing uh, twin bolt guns. Great, great unit for the Death Watch. I don't know, hopefully this will turn into an army. I feel like this is the stuff I own that I'm kind of the most lukewarm on. It's, it's super, super cool conceptually. And when I think about it in my brain, moving just an entire herd of bikes across the table, it is so cool, but I don't know if I'll ever get around to it. Is it is it that much different than my Black Templar? Is it that much different than my Orcs? I don't know. I think that's probably why it's still sitting in this box. So uh, moving on. All right, so finally the piles are getting a little bit smaller. This is uh, my fledgling Grey Knight army that I have never painted a single Grey Knight in my life, but I love Terminators. I absolutely love Terminators, and I think Grey Knights probably have the most interesting looking Terminators, and so I have 20. That's what, three bo four boxes of five, if my math is correct, which it's usually not. And uh, I love these guys. They're all kit best, they're all converted. I put green stuff in between their torsos to give them just a little bit of extra height. I put on the uh, the Super Flamers. They're not Super Flamers, but whatever they're called. I haven't read a Grey Knight Codex in my life, but I'm super excited for these guys. I'm so excited that I've never painted them. But one day I want to have cool lava bases. I think I have like five tutorials on the channel for how to do lava bases, and I'm going to be using them all on these guys. Uh, I can't wait. I think I'm going to do True Metallic Metal, and then I'm going to go all out on their Power Force weapons. Um, 20 granite terminators sitting in a box. I'm these guys are gonna get done. They're not like the they're not like the the, uh, the death watch These guys are gonna happen one day, but uh, oh I just love them a bit. These these spark joy. These spark joy All right, let's move on All right Next up Probably the dumbest thing I own this is the Starship Troopers miniature game, long dead game. I think this 
was out of print in 2007 um, by Mongoose Publishing. And I have the complete core set. I have, uh, I have a couple of expansions actually for this game. I don't know why I have this. It's so cool. I love Starship Troopers. I absolutely adore Starship Troopers. I love the movies. I love all of the movies. I love all of the anime movies. I love the book. It's just, it's so neat. I had to buy it. My, I bought this from my local, friendly local gaming store. They had one that had been sitting on the shelf for like 17 years. I had to have it. Um, I actually built and painted the 20 arachnid warriors. They're, they're like 90% painted. Um, ah, it's just, it's so neat. It has all of the different things from all the different movies. It has a uh, arachnid blister bugs. It has the flyer bugs. It has the, the marine guys. I have the rule books. I have the core rules. I have the army specific rules. Ah, it's, it's all still on sprue. Uh, these are the, not the colonial marines, did I say that earlier? That's aliens. This is the starship troopers uh, who are called the mobile infantry. And what's really cool about this game is it actually does take from all of the different, all of the different sources. It takes from the original book, it takes from the anime movies, and it takes from the live action movie. And uh, it's really cool. Look at, look at how old this is. I mean, I could drive a car through some of these gaps. This is probably the silliest thing I own. No one will ever play this with me. I don't know why I would paint up like 40 miniatures, but I really want to. It's so neat. Um, yeah, this, this is a little shameful having this. All right, moving on. All right, I started by saying I wanted to work big and then get small because I thought that'd be better for my mental state. This is not like, this is the random stuff. This is everything that doesn't have like a nice, a nice slot to fit in. Um, this, I feel like I should get a pat. This is retro stuff. This crinkly bag. This is a uh, Rogue Trader minis. There's probably like five or six Rogue Trader Space Marines. There's a Rogue Trader bike a couple of first or second edition Gene Stealers on sprue, which I'm not sure I'll ever take off the sprue. They're so fun, they're purple, they look lovely. I think I think this is how they're meant to be. I might hang them on the wall like that. But uh, I have a jet bike, an old school uh, Space Marine hover bike. But uh, yeah, there's retro stuff. This is probably, I mean, this is not that shameful. It's unbuilt, unremoved from the sprue. This is a, a modern, uh, somewhat modern Emperor's Champion. And then this is the old, old school Emperor's Champion. Uh, well, maybe a video one day. I found these at a flea market. I don't know if they're old or if they're just reproduction of an old thing. Uh, there's a number, there is a phone number. I called it, it's not in service anymore. It is, uh, 15 millimeter lead revolutionary soldier models. So that's kind of fun. I have like a hodgepodge of different stuff. A couple, a little bit of Age of Sigmar stuff. I've got 10 pox walkers and I'm painting up for kill team. I have Saint Celestine and her helpers because I one day, one day I will start a Sisters of Battle army. I was, com I'm completely blown away by the new range of models. They're all amazing. But right now I just have Celestine, the bounciest miniature that Games Workshop has ever made. Um, one 3D print, another Emperor's Champion. And then, what is this? What is this? This is Necromunda House Goliath. I bought the Necromunda, it's not up here. I bought the Necromunda starter set and it came with a gang, a Escher gang, which I built. And then it also came with a Goliath gang, which I don't really care about. Um, these will probably get donated to the first person who will actually play Necromunda with me. This this is a bunch of Metal Tyranid models that I uh, that I also plan on doing for Kill Team. Um, yes, yeah, so this isn't this this isn't super duper shameful. Yeah, oh, all right, this 
This is the out of production Forge World Imperial Space Marine. I picked this up forever ago on eBay. I got a great deal on it. Um, uh, one day I will do a video on this. Uh, I've already put a tons of work into this, fixing it up, making sure that it's all nice and smooth and all fits together. This is a cool model. I've kind of been breaking my rule. I always, I always say, just paint the mini. Just paint the mini. Don't wait for your skills to match what you want it to be like. But I've never painted a big statue model before. So I think I want to do at least one statue before I tackle this guy, but very, very exciting. And now for the terrain. This is a, this is a big box. This is a big box of Games Workshop terrain. Um, this is the, the servo hauler and stuff. I have one set of kill team terrain from the starter box that I got on eBay. This stuff will get done because I'm playing kill team regularly. I should, I should get this stuff done. It looks lovely. Got some thermal regulators that actually have a little bit of paint on them. This, this is, this box is like on the painting table. Like it's going to get done, but these, uh, like, Two or three years ago now, the company that sells with uh, Spellcrow, Gothic Spires Hive City, is there a name on this? Tabletop Scenics. Yeah, of course it's Tabletop Scenics. So I bought a bunch of these. Uh, this one is okay to build. It's not that big a deal. I think I got it built in one afternoon. It's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of parts, but it's not, it's not insanity. So I will get that one painted up and built. This, as you can see, it's not even done being built. It is an absolute monstrosity. This took me weeks. And of course I have a second one, new in the wrapping. This is thousands of parts. Thousands and thousands of parts. It is absolutely insane to put together. Uh, not, not, you know, not for, not for ages zero to three, 14 and up. So I'm not quite old enough to build this, but it it's a monstrosity. I mean, it looks amazing, but it's so horrible. I mean, why? It's so 3D printable. You have to, this is like, this is probably a hundred pieces right here. So this, this doesn't bring shame. It doesn't bring joy. It's just here. It's a massive hunk of MDF terrain. And uh, I do, I, I will build it one day, maybe in a video, just a a, a 10, a 200 hour time lapse video of me putting this damn thing together. <laughs> but that finally wraps up my pile of shame. I'm going to go and bring it all back, get it all on the table. And I guess I'm going to look at it. And that's it. I have unearthed every bit of plastic I own. Oof. And I'm placing it in a big, ugly pile. It's time to face my fear. Here it is. A pile of grotesque gray, a monument of shame. Okay, so it's out in the open now. It's time to be responsible. What do I do now? It's so hard to look at things like this realistically. Could I really finish it? Is it really that much stuff? I have to find a way to figure this out. I broke it down model by model and I'm going to do the math. Could I realistically finish all this stuff or do more dramatic steps need to be taken? I am going to estimate four hours per model to finish them. I think that's fair. It doesn't take me four hours to paint an orc boy, but it will probably take me eight hours to paint a single centurion. So I think it balances out to four hours a model. And painting always takes a little longer than you think, so four hours is probably a good conservative number. Looking through my space marines, I have 10 intercessors, 10 assault intercessors, six centurions, four space marine tactical marines, three primaris eradicators, three blade guard veterans, three outriders, three space marine chaplains, two space marine devastators with plasma blasters, two terminator chaplains, two space marine razorbacks, one primaris captain, one primaris lieutenant, one blade guard ancient, one primaris chaplain, one primaris redemptor dreadnought, and a space marine land raider. So for all of my gray space marines, I'm looking at 54 miniatures, and that is approximately 216 hours of painting. For my Cult of the Four-Armed Emperor, I have 25 Acolyte Hybrids, 15 Gene Stealers, 10 Aberrants, and 3 Autocannon Heavy Weapon Platforms. All in all, 53 miniatures, equaling about 212 hours. For my Mad Max-inspired Orc Army, I have 20 Orc Boys, 15 Orc Knobs, and 15 Orc Warbikers, and two Defcoptas. 
That's 52 models and more than 200 hours. Looking at my Death Watch, I have 25 Space Marine Bikers, 5 Terminators, and 10 models in the Kill Team Cassius. 40 gray models, that's 160 more hours. For my fledgling Grey Knight army, I have 20 Grey Knight Paladins, 20 models, 80 hours. For my collection of Starship Troopers stuff, it's about 30 miniatures, and that's coming in at 120 hours. Now that is all the models that make sense, now for the random stuff. 10 Malifaux Arcanist Performers, 10 Anvil Industries Miniatures, 10 Retro Rogue Trader Miniatures, 10 House Escher Gangers, 10 House Goliath Gangers, 7 Stormcast Eternals, 5 Metal Legion of the Damned, 4 Tyranid Lictors, 3 Grave Wraith Stalkers, 1 St. Celestine and Gemini, 1 Out of Production Forge World Imperial Space Marine Statue, 1 Box of Games Workshop Terrain, we'll call that 5 more miniatures, and 5 big pieces of MDF Terrain. 83 miniatures, 332 hours. Wow, 332 hours, that is a long time. All right, with it all laid out, I'm looking at 1,320 hours. <sighs> okay, so that's crazy, um, that's nuts. So let's break it down, let's break it down even further. Is that number as insane as it sounds to my ears right now? So in a year, let's say I paint for an hour every weekday, and I go hard on weekends painting for eight hours every weekend. 261 weekdays is 261 hours, and 52 weekends a year, 52 times eight, 416. That is 677 painting hours in a year. So to finish off my pile of shame, it would take me just a hair under two years. That is the best case scenario. Okay, so knowing that, what I would like to happen is I would like to downsize a little bit. Maybe lose some of the things that don't spark joy, and then whatever is left gets done. I do paint a lot, and maybe I'm looking at a two-year project. Give or take a couple of new things I pick up along the way. Let me know in the comments if you see something in the Gathering of Grey that is worthy of a video. I have a few things in the works, like these Centurions and this Land Raider, and you guys will see me paint this Imperial Space Marine statue on the channel. This video hurt a lot to make, but it's important to reevaluate my collection. I have been painting so much lately, and I have a YouTube channel. That helps too. Maybe it's not out of the realm of possibility I get all this stuff done. Maybe one day, if I wish upon a star, I will be out from under this pile of shame. I have seen worse assortments of remorse online, and that is how I will justify my pile of shame to myself so that I can sleep at night. But I know it's always there, watching me. So guys, what do you think? Can I dig myself out from under this pile of shame, or am I just deluding myself? I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and now it's time for EOB Complete. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Krieg Sergeant by Just Make Stuff, Illuminator Cesares by Caliban Lost, An Elf Warrior by Obscuro, A Grey Knight by Canary, a Fancy Scout by 40k Tanith, a Venari Alaran Wardens by Jinx Black, a Kind Wizard by Og to Money, Darth Vader by Zerkum, some Corn Warriors by Dark Nova 642, some Night Haunt Spooks by Lube, a Chaos Space Marine by Big Monkey, a Stompa by Trizart, a Storm Raven Gunship by Huntron, a Nurgle Terminator by Vitev09, a Belisarius Call by Spaghetti Wizard, an Adventurer with Friends by K Bulb and a squad of Chaos Space Marines by Bred S. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.